Hey everyone, uh, notes 4.3 are on completing the square um, and we did everything that is on this page, on page four together as a class. So let's skip ahead to page five and we'll talk about how to complete the square. So if you look right here on the left side, we have our steps and on the right side, we have our example. So the first thing we want to do is make sure that a equals one. So if not, factor the a out from the x squared and the x term, but not this, the, the constant term. So in this example, we have y equals 2x squared minus 20x plus 35. We are going to factor out the 2 from these two um, terms right here. So I'm going to factor out a 2. I get x squared minus 10x. And then I'm going to leave some space. I'm going to write plus 35 on the outside of the bracket. Okay? Quick note, it does not matter if this value is divisible by the a value, you still have to factor that out because the x squared, the a value here, has to be 1. So we have to divide by 2 to get a 1 here. And I'll show you an example where it won't necessarily be evenly divisible shortly. The next thing that we need to do is we need to figure out what b over 2 squared is going to be. So here our b value is negative 10. So I'm going to take negative 10, divide that by 2, and then I'm going to square that. Well, negative 10 divided by 2 is negative 5, and negative 5 squared is positive 25. So that is what b over 2 squared is. Then it says add this expression, this b over 2 squared. Where am I going to add it? Into this expression right here. So I'm going to recopy down this expression, and I'm color coding this on purpose so you can see where all of this is coming from. So remember how I said leave some space? This is why we're going to leave some space. So um, this is where we are completing the square, and I'll explain to you what I mean by that shortly. So I'm going to add 25, but I'm not allowed to just randomly add 25 into an equation. Like that's so not allowed. Normally, if we add a number into an equation, we usually add it to the other side. But another option that I have is to subtract 25. So it says right here, make sure to balance out any values you have added. If I add 25, then I'm going to subtract 25 because technically 25 minus 25 is zero, which brings me back to this expression, which would bring me back to this expression. So I'm not changing anything at all, but I'm rewriting an equivalent expression um, to the original equation. Okay, so then it says um, this is where we are completing the square. So this right here, what we have here is our perfect square trinomial. And we don't want to touch this right now. We're going to leave it. Our perfect square trinomial, which is... Um, all of these ones that we had here. These were all perfect square trinomials, except for this one. Um, so these are the perfect squares that we can easily factor with the exact same factor. This is going to be the same thing right here, uh, this expression right here. Okay, so then it says in step number four to, if necessary, distribute to any leftover terms in the bracket. So here, this is my leftover term right here. So I'm going to copy down the y equals two. Then I'm going to copy down my perfect square trinomial and I'm going to keep it in the brackets. But anything that is not the perfect square trinomial, like this negative 25, I want to pull that out of the bracket. So I'm going to distribute the 2 through to negative 25, and I get a negative 50, and I'm going to bring that outside of the bracket. And then I'm going to copy everything else down, which is that plus 35. Okay? What's the point of doing all this? The whole point of doing this is to factor this perfect square trinomial. So if you look right here, um, I'm going to write this a little bit smaller because I'm going to show you this next step. Ideally, in the future, you don't need to show this next step. Um, but for right now, I want to show you how to get this next step. So I'm going to say x and x, and then I'm going to use 5 and 5 because 5 times 5 is 25. And if they're both negatives, then they add up to give us this negative 10x, which is what we want. Okay. And then I'm going to um, rewrite this or copy everything else down. So I'm going to copy down the minus 50 and the plus 35 right here. Okay. Um, and once I do this, the whole point of this is to just write this out as x minus 5 squared, because when I write something multiplied by itself twice, you're just squaring it, okay? And then again, I'll copy down the minus 50 plus 35. The goal is to go straight from this step to this step and just be able to just say and identify that this is x minus 5 squared. 
One other thing that I want you to notice as well is that it is not a coincidence that this value that we have right here, this minus five that we have here before we squared it, is this minus five that we have here and is also this minus five that we have here. It is not a coincidence. The reason why that uh, this matches up is because negative five, when I double it, will give me the negative 10 that I want, and when I square it, will give me the 25 that I want. So negative five, when I double it, gives me this negative 10 that I had originally, and then it gives me, and when I square it, gives me the 25 that I added in to literally complete this perfect square, okay? And then lastly, it just says to collect like terms or add your constants together. So I'm just gonna put these two guys together right here. So I end up getting y equals two, and then in brackets, I'm gonna have x minus five, quantity squared, and then I'm going to put these two numbers together and I get minus 15. And now we have completed the square. And notice that by completing the square, we are now in vertex form. So we started off, if you look up here, we started off in standard form, which is y equals, if you remember, ax squared plus bx plus c, and now we are in vertex form, which is y equals a times x minus h squared plus k, okay? But you have to understand that we haven't changed anything at all. This, ex this equation right here is equivalent to this equation up here. In fact, I'm gonna graph them both out on Desmos so you can see that they are equivalent. So if you see here, our first equation is in standard form, that's what it looks like, and then our second equation, when I turn it on, is in vertex form, and it's exactly on top of the other equation. They line up perfectly because they are the exact same equation, which means that we did this correctly. If you don't get the same exact equation, then something went wrong. So let's take a look at a couple of examples just to make sure you're um, completely okay with this. So in this example right here, we've got y equals, and then we've got a negative five on the outside right here. The a value is negative five, but inside of my brackets, I have to have just an x squared. So I'm gonna factor out a negative five. So when I divide negative five x squared by negative five, I just get x squared, which is exactly what I want. Then I'm going to divide 80 x by negative 5 and I get negative 16 x. I'm going to leave some space and then I'm going to write plus 3. And then again, just a reminder, um, we leave the 3, we leave the constant out of the, the whole deal right here, okay? So then to find um, the number that will complete this perfect square, I take the b value, which is negative 16, I take it, I divide it by 2 and then I square it. Well, negative 16 divided by 2 is negative 8, and negative 8 squared is positive 64. So here I'm going to write plus 64. But I can't just add 64 and not balance it out by subtracting 64, okay? So now, once I do that, this is my perfect square trinomial. So I'm going to leave that inside of my bracket. So I'm going to say y equals negative 5. Leave this inside of my brackets but I'm gonna leave this poor minus 64 out. However, when I do this right here, I have to distribute the negative five through to the negative 64 if I'm gonna leave it out. I'm gonna take it out of the brackets, but this is saying I've got negative five copies of this negative 64. So negative five times negative 64 is positive 320, and then I'm just gonna copy down the plus three. Now, I need to factor my perfect square trinomial. I'm going to do this on the side so you can see where this comes from. But again, the goal is for you to not have to um, show this work anymore. But I know this is going to be x times x because x times x is x squared. Then I'm going to look for multiples of 64. But because we completed the square, we know it is a perfect square. So I'm only going to use 8 times 8 um, because um, we want these to be identical brackets. Um, and I know that this would give me 8x and this would give me 8x. And the two um, 8x's have to be negative in order for me to get this negative 16x here. Just a reminder, this right here is minus 8 right here, which is this minus 8 here and this minus 8 here. So I'm going to rewrite this as x minus 8 squared because that's what this means when you write it out twice. And then I'm going to copy everything else down. And then I'm just going to collect these like terms. So positive 320 plus 3 is 323. And this right here is my um, answer 
in vertex form. And the nice thing about putting this in vertex form is now I know what the vertex is just by looking at my equation in this format. Whereas before, I didn't know what the vertex was just by looking at the equation in that format. So we can say here, oh, our vertex is going to be 8, 323. And we can also say that it is going to be a maximum because this is a negative A value, which means that our parabola is going to open down, which means our vertex has to be right on top. So here we have our equations in standard form and vertex form. If I turn on standard form, this is what it looks like. And I can even click on my vertex here, which is 8323, which we determined was correct. Um, and then if I look right here, this parabola, um, the purple one lines up perfectly with the green one, which means that they are exactly the same. So we've done this correctly. All right, in our next one right here, I want to do the same thing. So here, though, we've got lots and lots of fractions in this example. I'm going to tell you right now we're going to have fractions. Pay very close attention to what's going on here. So here we get y equals. I need to factor out the 3. Even though this minus 2 is not divisible by 3, I still have to factor out that 3. So when I do that, I get x squared right here. Now, I'm going to take um, this uh, negative 2 right here, divide that by 3, and that's what I get for my x value right here. Because whenever we factor, we're just dividing. If I were to distribute this 3 through, I would still get negative 2x. If you look right here, we took the 80 and divided it by negative 5, and that's how we got negative 16. So we have fractions here, and that's okay. Don't let this scare you, okay? Um, the more practice we get with fractions, the better off we're going to be. Um, and your calculator will also be a nice tool to help you out with it as well. Okay, so now that I've done that, remember we leave a little bit of space right here. Now that I've done that, I need to take my B value, which is this minus two thirds, and I need to cut that in half, and then I need to square it. I'm just gonna do the division by two on the side right here. So I'm gonna take negative two thirds. When I divide this by two, it's kind of like saying divided by two like this right here. Not kind of, it's exactly like saying that. And um, something that you have to remember from elementary school is that when you divide fractions, you always multiply by whatever the reciprocal is here. So this is one over two. So just a little uh, phrase to help you remember it. You keep this, you change the division sign to multiplication, and then you flip this. So I like to say keep, change, flip. You're going to hear me say that a lot. Keep, change, flip. Keep, change, flip. Okay? So when I do this right here and I multiply across now, I get negative 2 in the numerator, and then I get 3, over, three times 2, which is 6 in the denominator, which reduces to negative 1 third. I could have also just said these two numbers will cancel each other out and then I get a negative one third. Okay, totally up to you. But regardless, um, that's the value that I get here when I divide by, by two. So I get negative one third, but I still have to square it. And when I square it, I have to square everything that's inside of the brackets. So I square the negative one and negative one times negative one is a positive one. And I also square this three and three times three is nine. So I'm going to say plus one over nine. But if I add 1 over 9, I have to subtract 1 over 9, okay? Now, this right here is our perfect square trinomial, okay? So I'm going to rewrite my equation and keep only my perfect square trinomial inside of my brackets. This minus 1 over 9 right here is not part of my perfect square trinomial. It's just what we use to balance out this plus 1, 9 that we had over here. So I have to distribute this 3 through to negative 1, 9. So I'm going to multiply 3 over 1 by negative 1 over 9. So 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. 1 times 9 is 9. And then I can reduce this to negative 1 third. So this means right here I'm going to subtract 1 third and then add 7. You could have also just said this 3 and this 9 are both divisible by uh, 3. The 3 divided by 3 is 1. Um, 9 divided by 3 is 3. 1 times negative 1 gives us negative 1. 1 times 3 gives us 3. Okay? Okay, so let's talk about how to factor this right here. We get x squared minus 2 thirds x plus 1 over 9 is what needs to be factored, this part right here. I know that I'm going to have to use x and x, and then I'm going to see what times, it's, what times itself gives us 1 ninth, which is 1 third, 
and then this gives me 1 over 3x, this gives me 1 over 3x, can give me negative 2 over 3x if they're both negatives. So this turns into x minus 1 third squared. Again, the whole point and the whole goal is for you to be able to go straight to that. And remember, we can get that value from this number right here. Um, but don't just like memorize that. You need to understand why it is that we can do that. Okay, and then I have to collect my like terms. I have to put these two values together. Now, they, uh, in order for me to be able to do that, I need to get a common denominator. So this is technically 7 over 1. So I get here 7 over 1. I'm going to multiply by 3 to get my common denominator of 3. This stays negative 1 third. This becomes 21 over 3. Add them together, I get 20 over 3. And we can just leave it as 20 over 3. Okay, so this is our equation in vertex form. I know this might be a lot. If you have questions, just write them on the side and I'll answer them next time I see you in class. But I promise the more practice you get with this, the easier it's going to get. So here we can see that our vertex is going to be positive one third, positive 20 over three. And we also know that this vertex is going to be a minimum because the A value is positive and your parabola will be opening up. So your vertex will be a minimum. Let's double check our answer. All right, so here are our two equations, one in standard form, one in vertex form. When I turn on standard form, this is what I get right here. And it tells us here that our vertex is at 0.33 and then 6.6 .6, uh, repeating. And that should make sense to you because 1 third is 0.3 repeating and then 20 over 3 is 6.6 .6 repeating. So this vertex right here should totally make sense. And then um, right here, I turn on the parabola in vertex form. It perfectly matches up. It perfectly lines up and I am good to go. And that's it for this video. Let me know if you have any questions. Um, I know this stuff uh, can be a little bit overwhelming, but I promise you with practice will be good. Okay. All right. I'll see you in class. Bye.